You're having a lot of fun playing a game, and it is difficult, but near the end you slip off a platform and get sent all the way back to the beginning. Sometimes it can be pretty hard to continue from this point. We're going to try to solve that problem today by adding a checkpoint respawn system to our game. We're starting with a simple person set up with boxes to jump on, and in this case the touch sensor will go into this transmitter, so we can consider this antenna exit as our demise signal the player has lost. Right now we have it set to replay the level, but maybe there's a better way in the form of a checkpoint. We use a touch sensor to detect the player. We'll make it invisible and make sure that it can check for the person object. Now make sure it's big enough that it will definitely catch the player moving through it. Next, we'll want to visually indicate to the player that this is a checkpoint, that they can relax, they've achieved some sort of reprieve here, some form of safety. Add a simple box object. We'll set it to a size of 1.2 by 2. We'll make it invisible and unmovable for now, and we'll move it into place. Now in this case, I wanted to use two textures. One demonstrating that the checkpoint has not been reached, and one showing that you have passed this point. So I have these two texture nodons here. Now make sure that the size matches the size of your object so that it looks correct, and that you have selected the right texture face, in this case, Z-Center. You'll want to connect these to the simple object so they occupy the same space. The main logical unit that we'll be relying on is the flag nodon, and it's quite literally like a checkpoint flag in that it either holds a yes or a no output. We're probably going to want to know when the flag is not on and when it is on, so we'll add this not nodon. The not signal will attach to the unpassed checkpoint and the active signal will go into the path checkpoint. In this case, I'm going to add the party popper effect and a sound that will also let the player know that they have passed this checkpoint. These will also be set to go off once the flag is turned on. We have the aesthetics and player experience of the checkpoint done. Now we need to work with the logic. Instead of the player falling to their doom, immediately retrying the level, we're going to move it over to the right and add two AND nodons. We're going to use these to check for two cases. One if the player fails before he's reached the checkpoint, and one in case the player has passed the checkpoint and then fallen. If the checkpoint flag has not been turned on, we'll retry the level. If the flag has been set to on, however, we want to send the player back to that checkpoint. Instead of destroying the person nodon when they fail, we'll be using the teleport nodons to move them across the screen. Teleport entrance will be connected to the player. Set it so that it can teleport the person object. Then we'll place the teleport exit where we want the player to go once they've respawned. We'll connect this AND nodon to the teleport to activate it. So now, if we fall without reaching the checkpoint, the level will restart. If we fall after having reached the checkpoint, we'll respawn back right before the flag. 
For our first bonus objective, we'll add multiple checkpoints. This would be especially useful if you have a long level, and you can optimize this so that multiple checkpoints use the same sound effects and texture nodons, but in this case I wanted to keep everything in this video conceptually simple so that anyone can follow along. We'll start by copying everything we've already done and pasting it over to the right. You can see the teleport exit nodon has already changed from A to B, so we don't have to worry about that. We'll slightly change the color of the flag so that we can differentiate between the two checkpoints. We don't need the logic for the single checkpoint anymore, so we'll get rid of it. We'll add another teleport entrance to correspond to the second teleport exit that we just created. And make sure that the ID is set to B and that it will still teleport the person object. We're going to organize ourselves up here and add in a counter to keep track of how many checkpoints we've reached. A starting value of 0, and you should set it to a range of 0 to 2. We want the flags to increase the number on the counter so that we know if we've passed 0, 1, or 2 checkpoint flags. Once a flag is on, it will constantly output a signal of 1. To avoid running the counter up indefinitely, we can add a trigger from zero node on. And these are very useful for a lot of applications. In this case, we'll be taking the constant signal of one from the flag and turning it into a single input onto the counter. So it only goes up by one unit. We'll connect both of these flags to the counter that way. And we'll move it over so that it's a little more legible. We'll have three comparison nodons so that we can compare whether the output of the counter is 0, 1, or 2. There are several ways to optimize this. Maybe you can think of some using 2D marker nodons. We'll add the retry game node on back in and activate it only if no checkpoints have been reached. You'll then attach the corresponding outputs to the right teleporter. I was a little hasty here. There's another step that we need to add. We haven't taken into account yet when the player activates the loss condition. We're going to need a corresponding AND node on for each of these comparisons. So when the player fails, and the counter is at the given number, we'll teleport to that corresponding location. When we test it, the first checkpoint is working, but the second isn't. That's because I initially set the counter to a loop instead of a range. Once we adjust that, everything should be working perfectly. Our second bonus objective is to count down the lives to reset. So right now, if our player fails before reaching the first checkpoint, the level just restarts. But we'll be adding an additional teleport to the beginning of the level on channel C, attach it to the person node on, and adding a counter to keep track of our lives. 
so that we give the player three chances regardless of what point in the game they've reached when they fail. And we'll add another teleport exit on the first platform. We just need to change what happens when the player fails and the counter is at zero. Simply enough, we drag it over to the new teleport entrance. Now that we've gotten that taken care of, we're going to add a counter to keep track of the lives. For the counter settings, we'll start at 3, the mode will be range, and the count range will be from 0 to 3. When the player fails, the counter will count down, decreasing the lives by 1. We'll compare that to 0, which we can borrow from over here, and attach it to the retry game node on. So that we can see this visually on our level, we can quickly add a number object that will float around the beginning of the game and show you the number of lives. We'll attach the counter so we can see what the current number is. Simple number objects are a great debugging tool when you're trying things out and making your games. So the lives went down by more than one. What happened is that the player fail condition, even though it was short, was making the counter go down by more than one. All we need to do to fix this is add another trigger from zero node on to interpret this output and make it so that the signal only fires off once. Now we can count down, and when all the lives are lost, the level will restart. <laughs> 